Human physiology depends a lot on the work of enzymes in our bodies, and so we're going to take a chapter to describe enzymes and what they do and the energy considerations that come into play. So enzymes act as catalysts in our bodies, and a catalyst is something that you'll have heard about before in the context of chemistry. Uh, we're going to review this concept here, so let's start just by thinking about sort of a, a general reaction. Anytime we have a reaction taking place between molecules, uh, it's relevant to think about energy. Um, how much energy do the molecules have um, and which ones have it? So if we just come over to this graph and take a look, what this is representing is all of the molecules that might exist in a, a beaker or whatever sort of system we're talking about. So think about all the molecules that might exist in a beaker. And if we think about the energy that the individual molecules have, okay, most of the molecules will have kind of a medium amount of energy. Some of them will happen to be kind of low in energy, and some of them will happen to be kind of high in energy. And the ones that have a lot of energy, the ones that are high in energy, these are the ones that are most likely to actually react, undergo the reaction that, that we're talking about. Okay, so there's a small portion of the molecules that have enough energy to overcome uh, this barrier, the activation energy of the reaction. Let's switch down to this other graph. This is a, a different way to sort of think about what's going on. Okay, so there's a small fraction of molecules, a small fraction of molecules that are capable of overcoming the activation energy for the reaction. So this wall represents the activation energy. This is like a barrier. The, the molecules need a certain amount of energy in order to be able to react with each other. So a small fraction are able to make it over that hurdle. And once they make it over that hurdle, then it's all downhill. Okay, so once the reaction is actually taking place, there will be an energy that gets released from the reaction. So this is energy being released. Um, it's labeled over here. And finally, in the end, what we end up with are the products of the reaction. So we started off with reactants. They underwent a reaction. And what we end up with is the products of the reaction. Now let's think about what a catalyst does. Okay, so all of this was talking about sort of a generic reaction that might take place between reactant molecules. If we add in a catalyst into the system, what is that going to do? It's actually going to modify uh, the activation energy, and specifically it is going to lower the activation energy for the reaction. So that's kind of equivalent to lowering the barrier. And if we do that, if we lower this wall, then suddenly there are more molecules, more reactant molecules that are capable of making it over that barrier. Okay, so this is what all catalysts do. They lower that activation energy. Enzymes act as catalysts, so they um, enzymes help to make it so that molecules are more likely to react. We'll see how they do that in just a moment. All right, so let's take a look here. If the catalyst that we are talking about is an enzyme, how does it do this? How does it lower the activation energy? It actually all comes back to the structure of the enzyme. Remember, enzymes are just proteins. They are a type of protein, and proteins are very dependent on three-dimensional structure. So here's what an enzyme might look like, uh, or at least here's the schematic of what an enzyme might look like. The enzyme is the big blob in blue right here, and what this enzyme um, does initially is it binds to some substrates. So enzymes have what's called an active site or a plural active sites. It could be one or it could be multiples. And what the enzyme will do um, is bind to the substrates. And these substrates are the reactants of the reaction. So they're like the starting ingredients over here. Um, eventually they're going to react together and form some, some sort of product. Uh, but let's just start over here. So these would be the substrates, the molecules that are hanging out in the beaker. Um, and what the enzyme is going to do is bind onto them. And once they are bound, notice what happens. Substrate A and substrate B, these are now in very close proximity. The enzyme is literally holding them in contact with each other. So this is sort of facilitating an interaction that might not have happened otherwise. If these were just free to float around in solution in a beaker, um, they might bump into each other briefly, but they're probably not gonna stay together in close proximity. So the enzyme is helping that interaction to happen and consequently it's making it more likely for a reaction to take place right there. So in the end, 
uh, substrate A reacts with substrate B, and what happens in this case is part of part of this molecule actually breaks off and joins up with this one. Okay, these are now the products of the reaction. And notice in the end what happens. The enzyme lets go of both. Okay, so once the reaction has taken place, each of these molecules is now a slightly different shape. It has less of an affinity for these binding sites. So the enzyme just sort of lets go of them and they float away. And that's the end. The enzyme has not been used up. Um, it is capable of, of kind of starting over, right? It has not been modified. It can, it can start over. It can bind new substrates and facilitate this whole reaction to, to take place again with different molecules. So that's basically what an enzyme does. We're gonna be meeting lots of different enzymes throughout the, the course. And another thing about the enzymes is that they can be used as um, sort of as diagnostics to, to check for certain health parameters. Um, there are a certain number of enzymes that are, are present in known levels in blood plasma. And so just by checking the levels of these enzymes, this can give a indication of certain problems that may or may not exist in the body. I don't expect you to memorize these. These are just meant to give some examples. So for example, um, creatine kinase. Kinase is an enzyme. Uh, creatine kinase is an enzyme, and if its levels are not at the expected value, that can be an indication of something like muscular dystrophy. The muscles, we'll come back to this when we talk about muscles uh, later on in the course, but lots of different examples of enzymes, and again, if their levels are not as expected, if they're outside the normal range, that can be indicative of certain problems.